is I'm going to use the project section of QuickBooks Online to do timesheet level job costing. That's not going to affect my GL. It's only going to show up on this screen. So that's the main difference between everything I taught you in the past hour, everything I taught you affects the GL. It's accounting, posting, affecting transactions, right? Um, now what we're going to do is only timesheet level job costing, and it's not going to show up in my GL, but it will show up in my project section. So the first thing I got to do is I got to go to hourly cost rate, and I have to enter my hourly burden rate per employee. So unfortunately, this cannot be imported, so you have to do one by one. So we're going to go to Alfred, and we have his cost. Let me just come in here for a minute. I have a little bit of a cheat sheet here. So I'm going to use what I already have on my cheat sheet. Okay. So generally, you should have your own kind of cheat sheet here to do this. Okay. All right. So I'm just going to simplify and do my hourly wages. And then I'm going to put everything on the overhead. Okay. So this would be 4.8. 24. Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm just copying the burden rate already calculated on a spreadsheet. I'm going to copy into the QuickBooks area to do this. Okay, so I can just enter the number here and click on save. You actually don't need to uh, open up the calculator. You can open up the calculator if you want, if you want to do it manually, but if you already have the number because you figure it out outside of QuickBooks, you can just click on add and do it in there. Unfortunately, this cannot be imported. So you have to, in this screen, you got to do one by one. Okay, I hope I didn't miss any, um, but that's okay. I'm going to click on done. So now that we have entered our uh, burden rates, again, up here in the top right, on the projects, these are all my burden rates. Now what I can do is I can now enter just my timesheet data in here. So you're gonna notice in the year 2021, QuickBooks actually is transforming the way the timesheets work. So depending on which version of QuickBooks Online you're in, and let me, I don't mean whether you're in plus or advanced, I mean on like which server you happen to be on, your timesheet uh, screen might look different. So I'm going to show you on this file that I created, this is the new screen. Okay, the new screen looks a lot different than what the old timesheet screen looks like. So I'm going to walk you to this screen. And then on the next example, I have a QuickBooks file that's still on the old screen. So we'll see kind of what that looks like. So we'll be able to see both of them. Okay. All right. So now I'm going to add the timesheet data for Alfred. Okay. And typically, I'm just going to come in here. Typically, again, I happen to have a timesheet here. So typically, I would just enter this in here. So I'm going to go back to that week. Let's, let me sort this. Let me sort it so I have it more cleanly here. Data sort. So we'll sort the first one by date. Second one by name, or the other way, actually. So the first one by employee, and the next one by date. Perfect. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to enter the timesheet data here, and I'm going to show you how to how to um, import. I'm going to show you how to import this in with TPI as well. We're going to use the same tool to import that, but I'm going to enter it by hand first so we can kind of see what that workflow looks like. So on the week of the 25th of January 25th, okay, I'm going to enter the data. So on Monday, we worked eight hours. And which job was it? Okay, there we go. So on Monday, worked eight hours, and then I'm going to click on here where it says add work details. And I'm going to put the customer project. So in this case, this would be job one. Okay. And the service, that would be, I think it was labor. Okay. That's the one that we're using. Because that's all we're doing. We're not going to mark it billable right now. All we're doing is saying on 
this day on the 25th, Alfred worked eight hours on this job. And then click on done. Tuesday, eight hours. Job one. Labor. Theory. Okay, there it is. It showed up. It decided to show up this time. Okay, so I just refreshed the screen. So now when you see under projects, you see here under cost, 145.92. If I click there, you will notice that this is actually tracking $145.92, but, uh, but it is showing the cost. It is showing it right here. So now it decided to work. It is showing the cost, 291.84. That's the two days that I job costed for Alfred for this job. I'm going to go back to, the, to all the projects, and you get to see it right there. It's tracking those hours. Now, there's more hours that I imported that weren't being tracked because I imported it prior to setting up the, those uh, burden rates. So I had to set up this hourly cost rate first prior to creating those, those timesheet entries. Okay, so let's go ahead and go to Transaction Pro Importer. I'm going to log into Transaction Pro Importer and I'm going to import the timesheet. Okay. So I'm going to go to import. I'm going to import now a timesheet right here. It says time activities. Import. I'm going to click and drag my spreadsheet. I'm going to open the spreadsheet again. And this is going to be uh, this one called timesheets to import. So I'm going to do timesheets to import. So transaction date, now this will be the actual day because it will be every time entry. The name will be the employee name. The time in this case will be the hours. Description, there's no need to put anything on the description. I will go ahead and put the day if I want to, but it doesn't make any difference. Customer, this will be my job, my job or project. Service item, this will be this item or account. Hourly rate will be the burden rate. In this case, it, that doesn't matter anyway, but I'll put it in there. It doesn't matter. And then um, location, class, we don't need that. Actually, I don't need to put the rate at all. because let's, let's, let's avoid some confusion. So no date. So I got my transaction date. I got my employee name. I got my total hours. In the description, I'm just going to copy the date in the description. Again, we don't need that, but I'll leave it there anyway so you can see it. Customer job, item account. That should work. Import. Okay, here's a quick preview, and then import, and yes. So let's wait to see what happens. And again, we're, in, we're importing timesheets that we had on Excel. We're using Transaction Pro Importer, third-party software that costs $10. I... Um, I created a spreadsheet that has the date, employee name. The employee name matches QuickBooks. Hours, burden rate, and total cost is irrelevant for this import because we're using the QuickBooks timesheet burden rate. The job and the item account, very important. No errors on the import, beautiful. Okay, let's go back into QuickBooks. Okay, there it is. So that actually, that worked beautifully. So notice that now all the projects have job costing attached to it. So you see it right there, very, very clearly, very easy to see. If I open up, let's say job number three, you will see all the hourly time cost associated with each employee. And again, this is still only, only, only in uh, the project section. Okay, so you get to see my income, my cost, and my profit. But when I go into my payroll reports, none of this stuff posts into the P&L. Okay, I'm actually going to show you that. I'm going to go into P&L by customers. Okay, and you will notice that all the payroll is still sitting in that not specified or admin column because none of this work, timesheet method, doesn't post into our, uh, into our profit and loss. It doesn't affect my GL at all. And it respects any journal entries that you made uh, to make it look very, very clean for tax purposes. So only for the purposes of getting your labor cost by project 
that will be on this screen and this screen only. No PL by customer, uh, no profit by customer, none of this stuff is gonna show up in here.